I'm only going to say one good thing about the 50, 30, 20 budget, and I'm going to get it out of the way right now. This budget is a good starting point, but that's it. If you need help with your initial budget allocations, great. Start out with the 50, 30, 20 and see how your numbers shake out. Here's the problem though. You're letting the tail wag the dog. It's all backwards. If you pick these arbitrary percentages, then your budget will set your goals when your goals should be setting your budget. What I'm trying to say is that the 50, 30, 20 budget will inevitably end up being perfect for some fraction of the population, but you are not some fraction of the population. You have specific goals and your budget should be your path to achieve those goals. On top of that, your goals should change over time. So naturally your budget should change too. If you keep an arbitrary allocation set in stone, then you will hamstring your growth potential. In this video, I'm going to show you how to derive your optimal budget allocations based on your specific goals. As always, I will show you a few examples with actual numbers at the end of the video. So let's get into it. The 50, 30, 20 budget lays out three broad categories that your expenses fall into and the percentage of spending in each. The 50 refers to 50% of your after-tax income going towards needs. Needs include reasonable shelter, food, transportation, and utilities. I would also throw in any expenses that are required for you to maintain your income as well. The 30 refers to 30% of your after-tax income going towards wants. Wants include hobbies, entertainment, vacation, toys, donations, etc. Anything that you do not need for survival or to maintain your income. Finally, the 20 refers to 20% of your after-tax income going towards savings. Savings include things like paying off debt, building up an emergency fund, and saving for retirement. I do not have any major issues with the lens of needs, wants, and savings, but there are some common pitfalls here. There's a slippery slope from needs to wants to be aware of. Shelter is a need, but there is a line where shelter becomes partially or even mostly a want. You do not need to live in the most luxurious downtown apartment. Transportation is also a need, but you do not need a Bugatti. Food is a need, but you do not need to eat out at, at a fine restaurant every night. You may need to put some percentage of your car or shelter into the want category. As an example, I would recommend finding the cheapest, most fuel efficient car that you could reasonably utilize. That cost will serve as the amount that belongs belongs in your need category for your transportation. Then you take the difference in cost between that cheap vehicle and the vehicle that you currently drive or plan to drive and put that difference into your want category. Seeing that difference stacked up against other costs in your want category really helps to keep things into perspective. Maybe that amount of money will roughly equal something that brings you infinitely more joy in life. Maybe the cheaper car would allow you to afford an extra cup of coffee or avocado toast every day. Just kidding. Or maybe you love the car and you don't want to go without it. Either way, you can make an informed decision. In the savings category, I think there are too many things lumped together as well. Your retirement savings goals should be separate and independent from your debt payments, and so they deserve different categories. For instance, super high interest debts like credit card debt should be prioritized above retirement savings. The average credit card interest rate is around 20% per year or more in 2023, while the average market return is around 10% per year, and that's historic average in the stock market. Trust me, there is not an investment out there that can deliver a guaranteed 20% plus returns. Personally, I would prioritize paying off super high interest debt above everything in my wants category as well. This brings me to my main issue with this budget and any other one size fits all budget allocation out there. Thanks for staying with me this long. If you are enjoying the video, please give me a like down below. It really helps me with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. The best practice when it comes to budgeting is to first have an honest talk with your partner or yourself about your long-term goals. What do you want to save for and how fast do you want it? If your kid is turning 16 in three years and you need to save for a car, then you better make a plan to do that. Are you wanting to buy a house in five years? That's gonna take a different budget. Do you wanna retire comfortably in 20 years? This is gonna affect what percentage of your income you need to save. Only after you line out your goals can you begin to calculate how much money you need to be saving. It might end up being 20% exactly Exactly, but it probably will not. The next step is to attack your budget from the other flank and determine your bare bones spending. What do you need to spend no matter what? You have to determine the cheapest, most reasonable housing, transportation, food, and utilities that you could work with and stick that number in your budget. Then any amount that you spend over that amount goes into your wants category, which is the last category that you fill out. After allocating the money required to achieve your goals and the money required to sustain your needs, all of your leftover cash can be spent how you want. Let's get into an example. 
I'm gonna focus on the savings category for this because it is generally the most difficult. Everyone should plan for retirement. Everyone will eventually want to either stop working, scale back, or maybe pivot into something else. Whatever retirement means to you, planning is a must. For the sake of this example, let's assume I'm 45 years old and I wanna retire at 65, and my current savings is $50,000. The next step is to figure out how much money I will need in addition to my social security benefit per year to retire comfortably. According to this article by Capital One, the average salary for someone between 45 and 55 is about 64,000 per year. So that's the salary I'm gonna go with. According to this article by Fidelity, you can expect to spend between 55 and 80% of your working salary to maintain a similar lifestyle. So let's go with 70% right in the middle. With this information, I can assume that I will need roughly 70% of 64,000, which is $44,800 per year in today's dollars. It is important to remember that inflation will make this number a little bigger every year. All we can do is try our best to account for that going forward. I will adjust for inflation by reducing our investment returns every year by the historic average rate of inflation. Fortunately for me, I do not need to come up with all of this money through my savings. My estimated monthly social security benefit at the age of 65 is $1,000. $916, which comes out to $23,000 per year. This means that my savings only needs to get me the difference, which was $21,800 per year. Now that we know how much I need for my savings every year, there are only two questions remaining. First, how much money do I need at 65? And second, how much money do I need to save every year to reach that goal? Answering the first question is actually quite simple thanks to all the work and research that went into establishing the 4% rule. The 4% rule states that you can safely withdraw 4% of your portfolio in the first year of retirement, then increase that amount each year to keep pace with inflation. By using historic returns, there is only about a 6% chance of running out of money before 30 years in retirement with a portfolio that consists of roughly 60% stocks and 40% bonds. In my opinion, the 4% rule is a great target to shoot for. First of all, there is a 90 94% chance with historic returns that you will not run out of money before the age of 95 if you retire at 65. Second, if you also consider life expectancy, you only have about a 26 to 27% chance to live to 95 or beyond. So when you put those two together, chances are very slim that you will outlive your money. And this savings is not your only income in retirement. You will also be supplemented by Social Security and Medicare, both of which do increase by inflation. So if I go by the 4% rule in order to have an initial withdrawal of 21,800 at the age of 65, then I need to save a total of $545,000. Remember, this number is not adjusted for inflation. What I mean by that is $545,000 is how much you will need today to achieve that initial annual withdrawal. 30 years from now, you will need much more. The way I plan to account for this is by reducing investment returns roughly the same amount as inflation, which will come into play now. The next step is to determine how much do I need to save every year for the next 20 years to hit my goal. I like to use this site, dqydj.com, to calculate historic market returns over different time periods. If we assume dividends are reinvested and we adjust for inflation for a 20 year period, the average annualized return is 6.637%. Next, we take that 6.637% and plug it into this investment return calculator. As you can see, with an initial investment of $50,000, I would need to invest about $8,600. $667 per year for me to hit my goal of $545,000 by the age of 65. Now that we have actually calculated how much we need to save, we can see what the percentage ends up being. Using this paycheck calculator, we can see that after taxes and deductions, an annual salary of 64,000 becomes 52,763, which means $8,667 in savings just happens to be 16.4%. After going through the process, you can see that the percentage could easily be much higher or much lower depending on the goals you set for yourself. For instance, if I were to start my budget 10 years later at the age of 55, then I would need to save $33,065 each year. That would be a staggering 62.7% savings to hit my goal. Clearly, it pays to start budgeting and making financial goals early in life. If I started 10 years earlier at the age of 35, then I would only need to save $2,133 per year. That is just a 4% 
retirement savings each year. The main lesson I want you to take away from this video is understanding the importance of dynamic budgeting. If you pick some arbitrary allocation percentage off the internet, then your budget is not serving you. Set your goals and calculate the allocations that you need to make your goals a reality. In the 50, 30, 20 budget, there is nothing wrong with the three categories, needs, wants, and savings, if they really resonate with you, but I believe there's a better way. If you enjoyed the video and want to learn more about budgeting, check out this video where I go over the easiest and most passive budgeting system. This is the system that I use personally, and I have included all the tools and resources so you can too. Until next time.